What is up guys? I'm going to be building three P47 Thunderbolts. These came out really good. I'm really excited to share these with you. And I did all three decal versions that the kit offers. And let's get to building. So this is your classic Rebel box. Um, they don't make these anymore, but you can still find them on eBay, I'm pretty sure. This is how the sprues come. They do not come in bags, uh, but the canopy does. This model does not have recessed panel lines. It only has those recessed panel lines where the control surfaces are, but the panel lines are pretty good um, and also has good rivets and stuff in it too. This build is a really simple build too. Um, there really isn't a lot of parts in here. so. Any beginner could build this model. The wheels also have really good detail and the engine as well. Um, you know, uh, there wasn't a detail missed in this kit, other than the panel lines, but all the other areas were really good. The fuselage has really good details on it too. Uh, the scoops are obviously pretty well given in and um, also there's a little bit of exhaust pipe there that is actually really good too. And there's some hatches cut out and stuff too so um, they really didn't miss a detail on the fuselage either. This model also fit together very well. Uh, there wasn't a lot of sanding to do on it at all. And the decals are obviously the classic Revel de decals. Uh, they really, they're pretty much flawless um, anytime. So uh, I like these decal sheets. So I will be doing all three of these decal versions. I'll be using every single decal on all three of these sheets. So uh, it's pretty awesome that I did all three. Classic Revel instructions, and they really do take you right through the airplane. It's very simple, very easy to understand. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten confused on a Revel instruction sheet, so um, it's very easy to follow these instructions and build your model. So let's start off with just painting the interior things with some olive drab. Uh, I did do all three of these P47s differently. So this P47 got olive drab and on the outside on the uh, landing gear areas it actually got some chromate green. Um, but I did change it up for the other two. On each P47, I did different shades of olive drab and chromate green, uh, just because I wanted each one unique, kind of, and 
Um, it was just part of my weathering system so that each one wasn't exactly identical. So I did that on the exterior of the model too. These are the decals for the control panel. These went on very nicely. Um, you know, you just stick it on there with your decal solution and you use a Q-tip and you just press it into those fine areas and make sure that it's in the right spot. So as you can tell, uh, the interior of this is gray. It's not correct whatsoever, but I wanted to make these things a little bit more unique uh, because all of them are olive drab, so uh, on the outside anyways. So I just wanted to just brighten the, the cockpit out a little bit just so uh, some details showed out inside the cockpit area. And also I did all three cockpits differently. So this one obviously did get the uh, olive drab, the other one got gray and another one got a darker shade of gray. So as you can see, I painted some areas red and black and here I'm putting on some yellow, yellow cords and stuff that are kind of out in the open. Uh, I typically don't usually use a lot of resources in trying to make this thing as scale as possible like other modelers. I try to just get the interior out of the way so that I can have an awesome looking model on the outside moreover. Here I'm using a oil based uh, Model Master um, wash. Uh, this stuff um, actually ended up going bad on me. I wouldn't recommend other people to use it but uh, I may have, maybe it froze on me, I'm not sure, oil doesn't freeze, I don't, I don't know why it started ashing on me, but it started like flaking off and stuff. Um, so I would recommend maybe an acrylic wash or something like that, or, or maybe another type of oil wash, but uh, it did work great for this model uh, when I did have it, I don't even have it anymore, and um, as you can see there, I just I keep leveling it out with thinner and just keep adding more thinner until it makes a good look on the inside of the model. And most of it's wiped off. So, you know, it just depends how you want your model to look. Here's one cockpit, and it, the funny thing is, I actually don't remember which cockpit went in which P4, P47, uh, but this went one, and the next one went in the other. I'm not really sure which one went where, because I built them so long ago, but they look pretty good. I was really happy with them just by doing them quickly and just getting them over with pretty much. So as you can see the cockpit fit in really tightly. Uh, I'm actually struggling a little bit to get it to uh, get into the place that it's supposed to go, but once it's in, it's in, and it did fit in really nicely. These fuselage halves literally fit in so perfectly. There's hardly any gap filling or anything to, to do to these P47s if you do the right prep work first, which would be sanding off all the the little loose edges and all your clip marks and stuff so make sure to do that on all your models but uh, with this P47 make sure to do that but other than that there really was no gaps or whatever. Same thing with the wings they fit together just fine there was no weird angles or um, like stupid uh, like little cutouts of anything that would get in the way of having these two pieces come together nicely. Uh, it really did go together well, so there's no problems here. I'm using Tamiya Thin Cement to mend all the seams, and after you do this, you just sand it all down and you should be good to go. There shouldn't be really any gaps. If you sand good enough, there shouldn't be any gaps. So. 
this came with a pretty thick attachment for the wing. Um, it does require some, definitely some flexible glue, but you want to just lock all this stuff in. Uh, I had to build another P40 because one of the wings actually did fall off because I didn't glue it right. Um, so definitely recommend uh, getting some good glue and adhesion on those wings so that they don't fall off on you because the landing gear are pretty wide out onto the wingspan. So d there's definitely a lot of pressure going onto the wings. I definitely wouldn't use this putty on the inside of these things. So don't follow me here. This was an experiment I was trying to do. Um, I was looking for a better way to uh, fill in these areas that just are a pain in the butt. This did not work. Though it is easy to fill it up, it is a pain to get out. I think there's still some blue gum crammed in there. And this is just regular silly putty I found at the dollar store. So don't do this. It's not a good idea. You will start cussing and it will not be fun trying to get all this crap out. Even though it does make for a sweet way to paint this thing, um, it doesn't work that well. Gravity starts to take hold of this putty stuff and actually it just falls out of the airplane after you're done with it. And if you have a large amount like I did, it just fell out. So this is a little gun sight that uh, goes in, on the inside of the canopy here. Um, I did paint these like a clear green just to give it a little detail on the inside of the canopy, kind of like a Spitfire uh, uh, look to those things. I don't know if it's if it's accurate at all, I'm not sure, but um, I don't really care. It looks cool in there, and um, yeah, whatever. I'm using crystal clear uh, glue to glue this canopy on, um, and I'm the type to cut all the the tape on top of the plastic which I know that's kind of scary and I have made several errors <laughs> doing so but it's just the easiest and fastest way I can get away with it it's there's just no other way that I really want to do it if I scratch it whatever it's fine I don't care <laughs> these are for my collection I'm not taking these to any shows or anything so you know if I get a bad photo I can just not put it on the YouTube channel you know, so it doesn't matter. Nobody will see it, right? <laughs> so this year again, I, I do prime the outside of the models because I want good adhesion to the plastic. So this here is again the uh, Vallejo Green Primer. And I just do a simple base coat of this primer on the areas that it is actually green. So this cowling I'm painting with Insignia White, I just, um, I feel like it's a better, like more matte look and the pictures, the reference photos that I had for Oki um, with the checkered board nose, it looked like it was like a faded kind of white in the picture. So uh, I just chose to do this faded kind of Insignia White for this model and it looks, Insignia White for World War II models is so amazing it looks realistic and old and like just like it would have looked uh back then so um i definitely recommend using insignia white on this model i use the same white on the tail insignia white uh just because i wanted that same look um, instead of being freshly new off the factory, it was uh, it looked like it was fresh straight off of a strafing run or fighting a fackle for something. So this is the slowest part of modeling for me uh, because I really don't want to make any crooked lines. I'll notice them later. Uh, so I'm just using some tape there to um, straighten out my lines and make it more, a little better.
I wish there was a shortcut to this process, but there is not. Um, I've had to do this on all my models, my P24s, my P47s, jeez, uh, every single model, and uh, it does make it look a lot better. It's totally worth it, but it is a total pain as well. So this is for the Pied Piper. This is gonna get some flat yellow. And this flat yellow looks amazing for warbirds. Um, if they're doing a, a yellow nose or, or whatever yellow, honestly, it just looks so amazing. So here, I'm not very perfect at panel lines, but yeah, it's the same thing as uh, as doing the riveting. You do the panel lines, and it just takes you forever if you try to outline it good, and um, you just do the best you can. If you do the panel lines first, then you really don't have to, you know, you can always correct them with your actual color that you're doing. And I gave the uh, control surfaces a little bit better texture. Um, and what they had so that it came through on the final finish. So this dude gets a, a green stripe on the top and uh, you just gotta tape off those areas and it also gets a green checkerboard against that yellow and, and man is it sweet when it comes out. Also, undershading a yellowish tone really is a cool thing to do with olive drab. So I use this neutral gray on all the models but on each model, I adjusted how much white I added to it after doing the initial coat, um, clearing up these lines a little bit. So um, each model has a specific gray to it, so it didn't look all completely identical. And like I said, if you make, if you make some mistakes on your panel lines, if they're not good, then you can just go through with your color and just start erasing all of your lines. And eventually, once you get all the coats down and everything and do your light with a little bit of white in the paint on top, then you should be good to go. I think this process takes a while, um, honestly. It might be easier to do just a full black um, bottom and top for your panel lines and then fill in the areas with uh, your airbrush with your actual color later on. Um, I really don't think it's necessary to do the panel lines anymore. I think that you know just doing a black base and then filling in the spaces and areas where uh, where the panel lines aren't is probably a better way to go about modeling but um, it does actually accent the panel lines a little bit better if you do it this way. Now with the olive drab, it's such a dark color that it's better to use, you know, it's better to use an olive drab and then do your pre-shading with your panel lines and then do your final coat of olive drab on top. It's just a better way to go about it. You get much better, um, you get a much better panel line look. Also too, if you did white as a primer and then did your black, that shows some really cool results as well. Now I did use different olive drabs. Um, this one was kind of more of a greeny tone of an olive drab, whereas the other ones were uh, a more a more darker, darker green tone. This is kind of a lighter green, yellowish tone olive drab.
So the tail came out just absolutely perfect. And um, if you are looking for some cheaper tape to buy, you can use this blue tape. Um, it's Pro Grip uh, blue tape. You can get it at Home Depot, Walmart. Um, this stuff literally does work really good. It did not pull off my paint whatsoever, and I've used a whole roll of it on all of my models. I do use Tamiya tape, obviously, for thinner areas and different things, but um, to do main stripes and stuff and to guard specific areas, this tape is legit. You can see how I'm using, you know, it's stuck on there really good. The lines come out absolutely perfect, and the best part is, is that it doesn't pull off your paint, which is the scariest part because it literally can turn into a disaster project. But you can trust this tape. If you use Vallejo primer and a couple coats of paint, you're good to go. This is the most satisfying part of modeling is to pull tape. Uh, it could be the worst part, but it is usually the most satisfying part. You get to see your final work come out and it's just awesome to look at. And we're getting these guys together. They're looking sweet. Here I use Microsol and Microset. This stuff literally lasts a lifetime for the $5 a bottle that it is. Um, it really is worth it to just spend the extra money and, and make these decals adhere to the surface as best as possible. If you're new to the channel, you're just checking this out for the first time, you can actually see history videos on these three aircraft. Um, with all my videos that I make for my models, I decided to include some history on you know, what we're actually building, what, what part of history we are actually building. So um, go check those out. One is about the box history of where Monogram actually came out with this kit way back when. So it goes through the history of all the different kits that it variants to, um, and then finally to this kit. And you can also check out the history of the pilots that actually flew these. Um, with most of these airplanes, they get a really good story of, of the pilots that fought in World War II with these warbirds, and you get to learn a little bit about the pilots and the times and um, the situations that they were in in these distinct aircraft. Never had a decal go on so smoothly. I actually did do quite a bit of reference photos for the exterior of the airplane. Um, not really for the interior because you can't really see that that much, but for the exterior I actually do go and, and try my best to recreate what, what it looked like in that picture sometimes, um, but I do try to recreate it as best I can. So this, I'm just gonna take this oil paint, and this is the same stuff I talked about earlier, and kind of apply it everywhere on the models, and then just dip your paintbrush in thinner, and just keep rubbing until all of that comes off. Before you do this though, make sure to put a clear coat on your model so that that oil can come off nice and easily. You can see here that it takes quite a bit of scrubbing, so um, I definitely think using Tamiya panel line stuff is a lot easier. 
All right, we are going to use some extra thin cement and just dab it with a toothpick. Then take your easy line, which is a Rubbermaid line, and just hold it on that area until you think it's dry and hold it even longer, just in case, and it, it does stick to it. It stretches out a little bit when it hits that CA, but it does stick to it really good. I like to give this a good wrap around the, um, the little antenna there, and I just barely pull it past where it's supposed to be stretched all the way. Just in case it does ever break, I can just replace one end and it won't be overstretched. This I am using to uh, beef up those lights a little bit other than just having flat red on those lights. You can just use your ultra clear glue and just put it in those areas that you want to glisten a little bit more. And you want to do like a few coats on those areas, but they actually end up being like really, really awesome lights. So besides being nerve wracked by cutting in all my tape um, on top of the plastic, like you're kind of not supposed to do, uh, Peeling them off is worse for me. Uh, it's very stressful to get in those little corners and start peeling that tape, but when it's off, it is so nice. So you can see on the canopy, some paint did chip. Um, that's pretty normal um, for clear parts for me. Uh, it just tends to happen all the time, so it's just part of it. So here's some quick shots just to show you the, the brief the brief little final production of these P47s. I'm gonna do a full photo shoot uh, right now, I'm getting into it. But um, these came out great, man. They're just, they're just really awesome. The bottoms look fabulous, and uh, all my lines came out good. The decals came out good. If you were to get your hands on this kit, you'll be very happy um, with what you'll get. I am going to do, go through and do a full photo shoot right now. I'm just kind of taking you through a little bit of the great accents of this one. So this one didn't have any of the rivets. I didn't put any rivets in this, in this at all. And it came out really good. Um, either way, I really wanted to see the difference on the same airplane. And there wasn't a big difference, but um, the other ones definitely do have more detail in them. Uh, just because of those rivets on those panel lines. The first one that I did, I riveted, uh, was the bug, and uh, I spent like six hours riveting it. And then the second one I did, I did, I spent like four hours riveting it. And then I said, uh, I think I just, I'm just going to make an excuse for the third one. <laughs> Pretty much that's what happened. So there's the bug there, and... Um, uh, just a sweet model kit uh, came out really good too um, did do some some flashing and some silvering on on the exterior of it as well um, and yeah they just they all really came out really good these are probably some of my best models other than the b24 i put a lot of time and work into the b24 and that one is just miraculous so um yeah here we go here's the photo shoot enjoy guys take it easy thanks again for watching and make sure to subscribe to enter a giveaway for a model and also uh be sure to join the facebook group um, i'd love to see you guys in there um join you can post some pictures and later on i will actually be featuring your guys photos um, that you post on some of my my feeds so thank you guys so much again for watching and let's get back to building enjoy the photo shoot